would have been a problem. Yucky. Whoopsie. Good morning. I know I'm a little early, so don't fret. You haven't missed anything. Let me straighten this out a little bit. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Jenny and Wanda, Stephanie and Sharon, Diana, Donna and Terry. Good morning, Christina. Thank you guys for stopping in today. I kind of got started a little early because <clears throat> I was getting a little carried away with what I was doing and I was afraid <laughs> I would be late. So I figured I would just hop on early. Good morning, Mary. Hi, Anne. And I'll show you kind of what I was thinking of working on today. Also, a little bit of news I will share with you if you guys missed this yesterday. This doesn't start till um, Monday the 1st, but pretty cool all this new storage stuff we'll have. Now, I know um, I have a lot of Stampin' storage, but I still am going to order a couple of these pieces because I think they'll be really helpful, too, with, like, to-go stuff and I know my lighting is weird because the sun's coming up again but really neat like the way you can organize all your stuff I did finally get a blog post and I apologize yesterday I posted and didn't realize there were prices so if anybody was looking for them they are on my post but I'll put up an official blog post with all this stuff on it as well but you can now get one for your ink pad and your markers and then they have one for the Stampin' Blends so you can see from this paper, you can configure them really any way. You can get like a big square. You can get the little square to hold your inks. So it's really nice. And you can build it. They said they've stacked theirs 50 high and didn't fall over. They wouldn't recommend stacking them 50 high. But still, that's pretty cool. And um, you can like mix and match how you have them together. And then they have... Uh, kind of little ideas of if you're what you're looking for this is how many you'll need and then they kind of showed you like three different layouts again sorry for the lighting is a little weird in here but three different layouts for what you might want to do so those are pretty cool pretty cool and they'll fit the new they will not fit the old pads that's one thing they will not fit the old ink pads thanks for mentioning that Suzanne they will they won't fit these because they designed them to fit the new pads because they got rid of that old, um, I guess it was like a spinning carousel that they had. I don't know. I never had that one either, but they don't fit the old pads. They only fit the new pads. And, and that's, that's the great thing, Jenny, is that apparently it's really good for people who only have a small amount of space so you can get your stuff because you figure if it's only really bigger than your pad, they're not really that big. So, that's pretty, I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty great, I think, for people, especially people who, like, have to fit their craft into a smaller area. I think that'll be super helpful. So, let's see what else. Good morning, and thank you for sharing, Karen and Melanie. Thank you, guys. So, I was um, trying to brainstorm for something to make today, and I thought, I haven't, um, I was trying to do, I try to do like techniques sometimes and then sometimes just cards. And I did share these the other day, if you guys saw these three. So this was really simple. I just did Versamark on the background, used the same stamp set. And I colored these in with the, um, the various watercolor pencils. They're from both packs. I do have, the, I do have two packs, the one that's current and then that one that was out for a limited time. I'm hoping another one comes out. And then I did this one just with clear ink. On that so again it's like watermarked but with clear uh, clear embossing powder I should say not clear ink and then the last one I actually inked in um, clear I versa marked it and then I stamped it with soft suede and then did clear embossing powder so three different cards again this one has no depth at all it's just stuck on there this one has a little bit I used um, if you can see underneath those crazy pieces I used the strips and I kind of just put them on 
And then this one, I also popped up the sentiment. And then I could put the inside because of you. But I thought this was a really, really cool idea, especially with the black. That's kind of what I've been trying to do lately. I know I've seen a lot of people do chalkboard stuff. So your turn for parent in the ER. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> you shared and you didn't shat it. Karen, it's not that kind of show. <laughs> But anyway, I thought it would be funny to do, not funny, I thought it would be neat to do like white on black, like a chalkboardy still thing. So this really isn't still exactly what I was going for, but I was doing it while I was getting the rainbow stamper ready for bed. And I managed to get three cards made, which is crazy. I also changed up the dimensions for it. So I trimmed this, you can see the wood paper's a lot thinner when I did the second version versus the first. So that kind of depends. It could go either way. And then the other one I wanted to show you, this was like a card I pulled out of the air because I needed a card for the blog hop, but you can't, you can see that shimmer. Gosh, I love that shimmer spray. So I just did this with glycerin and the um, ink colors. So I just used the re-inker and I just did it with sponges and glycerin and then I stamped. These are from the Enjoy Life stamp. I stamped them in black, but note to self, you want to make sure you let them fully dry before you spray your stuff on because the alcohol smooched them a little bit which is why I put the greeting down there just to cover up my mistake but I thought what we could do today because I've done this before but I haven't done it super recently is we could fool around with a little bit of background stuff to kind of get an idea of what we could do for background stamps and I will explain so basically if this were to be like the focal point of your card and this comes from if you don't have it I really like this but this is a host set it's called just because and with Mother's Day coming, I kind of, I pulled this out quite honestly because I really like these two. Um, many of you may or may not know my mom passed away. So I do still give my mother-in-law a Mother's Day card and I make them for friends and whatnot. But Mother's Day probably isn't quite the same for me anymore without my grandmothers, especially, and my mom. So I saw this one and I was like, well, this would be perfect timing for a Mother's Day card if you guys have someone you want to send it to or like your daughter or daughter-in-law or, you know, maybe a friend that you want to share a card with. But you could easily also swap to thinking of you or you could, you can also do this. You could stamp because these stamps are rather large. You could trim the words off of this and just use the image and then put it back together if you need it. You could do the same with this. You could take these parts off if you wanted to. You could just do the plant. You could just ink the plant. So there's lots of um, options with this. But then I also brought out a couple other ones. I know everyone likes the chicken, or the rooster, I should say, because he's really fun. And then I brought out one for the dads as well, because I feel like we kind of get like the bums rush at the end of the year, because a lot of stuff that the Father's Day stampy things are kind of gone because they end up selling out a lot of times. So I thought we would get a little heads up for part of this, but more so focus on background. So I'm going to show you what my original idea was. These are just kind of like the focus parts and we'll see if we can make, well, we're going to make at least two, but we'll try for three cards and we'll see what happens from there. So what I got out, where did I put them? Because I knew they're here somewhere. Okay. What I got out, I thought of a couple of cool ideas. And you could do this on white paper. I also did get some crumb cake and I got, I believe it is basic gray out because I thought you could do it on that as well. So I have made a card before where I laid this down and did different colors in the same or different hues in the same family. I thought we could do this one for the guy card. It would be really neat. Or you could do this, either one. But I'm going to show you what my ideas are. So bear with me. I don't really have a card specifically in mind, but I kind of figured we'll make like a couple things and see what works. And I'm sure lots of these things have been done before. I'm definitely not the first person to do anything. That's for sure. If not, I'm like the person that finds out about it and is like, why did it take me so long? So here's a piece we'll use for the background. That's crumb cake. And then is this one gray granite? gray granite. So I have also a piece of gray granite. And this one is a little smaller, but I'm going to leave it just to kind of show you the point of what I think we can do. So one that I thought would be cool is if you took, we'll use this uh, piece here. So if you took, so I just have this kind of like sitting down and I'm going to just put this here to kind of hold it in place. Just some painter's tape. It's very well used, loved. Probably needs to hit the recycle bin, but we'll try it one more time. 
because it's not quite as sticky. So one thing, obviously, you know, you can do with this, or maybe you don't know, so I'll show you something. So this is the same color, gray granite. So you could get your sponge, and you can sponge. You could do this with the daubers, and I'll do a little bit with the sponge, and then I'll do a little with the dauber so we can see the difference. And you can slide it. It doesn't have to be pressed. It kind of just depends. Everything will give you a little bit different of a look. But like if you have something that you really want to use, and I know a lot of times with stamp sets for me personally, I feel like I really like the stamp set, but I don't exactly know what to do with it. Sometimes maybe you have like a highlighted image like this. Like if you just stamp that on the card, it would be pretty, but you're kind of like, but you really want it to be the focus. So now I'm going to move to a dauber. And I'm still in the same ink. So then if you do a dauber, and we'll sh we'll do the difference, so it's kind of split in the middle here, kind of diagonal. So if you have something for the background where the background has a lot of focus on it, then it really could technically highlight your image. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping to go for. So we have those. So those are, there's those two. So I'm going to just stop here with this, and I'm going to lift this up. But I think I'm, what I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of a dark color. So there you go. So this is more of a light. And then I think I moved that anyway, so it's not going to matter. So this is a little bit lighter we did with the sponge. This one was more with the dauber, right? So we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of eyeball. I know this is probably not going to line up exactly, but I'll see if I can kind of figure it out. And then, so that maybe lined up. We'll find out in a minute. I'm going to do basic gray. And I'm just going to do like a couple spots of, I did go to a darker color. <laughs> Might not want to do that. I'll just do like a couple of darker spots. And I'm going to do this again with the dauber because it does give you a little bit more ink coverage. And you could do this, you know, as much or little as you wanted. Kind of in areas. Okay, so there's that. So this would be one background you could do so you have like different color inks right so pretty pretty cool you didn't get a notification notification you might have to check them again i'm sorry that's facebook for you i can't explain any of why they do what they do but i'm glad you're here donna so this is um this is one background there now one thing you want to make sure that you do and i have my um I can't remember what this is called. My sponge. My chamois. That's what it is. So you can wipe this off just to make sure you have your ink off. And I'm just going to wipe this up. Because you do want to make sure when you clean this, especially if you're using the embossing powder, that you clean it right away. Because the longer it is on there, it's harder to get off. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this one again, but I'm going to do something different. Now, I've never done this before. And again, I'm sure somebody did it somewhere. So, But I thought this would be a cool idea. So I'm trying to make sure I'm on a solid panel here of my table. So I'm going to just do the same thing because I want this to ink well. Let's see. Put this here. All right. Okay, now this I thought would be a neat idea. So we'll see how it works out. Where is my, here it is. So what I thought we could do is we could take our Versamark pad and yes, look, see when I made that card the other day, I forgot to um, clean it off first, but it's fine. It still works the same. And I'm gonna just ink directly down. And what I'm hoping is that this is only gonna go on the squares, but I don't know because this is the first time I did it. So we'll find out shortly. Okay, so hopefully that'll be good enough. We'll see. So you could stop there. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so you could stop there and just let this dry, right? Easy. Or I'm going to do this. I don't know what it's going to look like, and I thought we could do this on a different card too. I just have clear. So I have my clear embossing powder, and I did just order my new um, heat gun the other day. So when I do, I'll finally hook that up to the boss. And the cool thing about that heat gun, I did look at it. It does have two different um, heat settings. One's more for like drying ink on cards and then one is for heat embossing. So that'll be pretty fun. So there I have that. Let me just dump this. I have a whole nother container of clear, but I've probably had this one for, I can't even tell you how many years. 
All right, so quickly, just give me one sec. I'm gonna let this heat up first. All right, let's hit this. I do hear you, Pat, saying it's blurry. It's not blurry where I'm looking at it. I don't know if you want to maybe try to go out and in again. Anybody else having that issue? And this, I didn't do the, the middle fully. So so there's that. That was just direct Versamark over the mask. Again, when you have your Versamark, you do really want to make sure that you clean this off. You want to clean it off of your, um, your blocks, off of your stamps, because it does get kind of like tacky if you leave it. So I'm just wiping this right now with my chamois again. Okay. Could be just the internet connection, Pat. Sometimes that is goofy like that as well. So, so again, once I'm done with this, I will go still and rinse this because it does have that little bit of like a Versamark tack to it. You can feel it stick into my hand. But still, so there's two. So this one was just with sponge daubers and sponges this one you can tell i did move it a little bit it, this is blurry because i didn't line it up correctly this one is with versamark just direct to paper i could probably do to heat this a little bit more but it kind of gives a little bit of a different texture so you have that now the third thing we can do and this one is kind of this one is fun and this one is one where i really do need to rinse this off but i'm not going to because i'm going to do it with a different one I put this on the side so remember to rinse it and how about if we do this we'll do the diamonds and it doesn't really have to be in a specific way as a matter of fact if this is kind of rectangle I'm gonna off center just a little bit just so it doesn't take up the whole paper if that makes sense so when you use your embossing powder, which I haven't used as much as I thought I was going to use it, I think only because I forget about it a lot. So there's regular embossing powder. There's, I believe there's still silver. I don't know if that went away. I can't remember. And then there's shimmery white. But the cool thing is, even if this ever gets a little bit dried out, which it can. So this stuff here is got a little bit of a tack to it, but the stuff here on the corner here, mine is a little bit drier. If you add just a little teeny bit of water, it really um, re kind of reignites it, if that makes sense, re-wets it or whatever. It doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, it could just be like a drop. You don't want to put a lot in. So I would put in a drop if you notice yours is dry and then just stir with your, either with, you could do it with like a disposable knife or whatever but also this down here is much wetter if you kind of try to make sure that when you're finished with it the other thing that's pretty helpful is when you're done with it just make sure you kind of put it all like as down as you can so you know that it has like a layer on top and the, the majority of it is wet <laughs> for lack of a better term so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clear block and I'm just going to get a little of this and put this here and spread it out just a little and I think what would be cool if we did this like if we were doing this for uh, a masculine card is even though it's sparkly because there are a lot of very very iridescent car colors don't let guys fool you they like this the sparkle in their car too I'm gonna put one blueberry bushel drop and then I'm going to and I might wait to add this but I want to add like a little bit of gray so I'm going to put one smoky slate. We'll see what this looks like. Hopefully it doesn't turn out looking horrible because I've never done this before. So I'm going to mix it in and I'll make it like a blue. I'm trying to go for like a bluish gray. Oh, that's pretty. I mean, that's totally manly. <laughs> All right. 
So there's that. So then all you do is you kind of make sure that it's mixed the way you want it and then you just smear it. Now, the one thing I will tell you is, again, you have to make sure that you clean off your plate. So really what I did, have done when I've done this before is I've um, made, I have, if you guys get like takeout trays like from Chinese food a lot of times they'll come in like a big rectangle tray what I'll do is I'll fill it a little bit with water and some dish soap and then as soon as I'm done with this I'll sit it in there and let it soak until I actually go can go and wash it but the other thing with this paste is the thinner you go with it the quicker it dries so it kind of depends on what you want it to look like if you want it to be goopier so this part over here we're going to say is really, really thin, and I'm going to do one part that's going to be a little bit thicker, but they, these will not dry in time for me to finish making a card with them today. So we'll kind of do that, just like that. And then the same thing with your block. So if you're finished, I almost like want to see if I have something else to spread this on to. I'm just going to slip this underneath just for the heck of it. I feel terrible wasting it. You probably could also put this into like a Tupperware container if you wanted to use it for more than one thing. Pull this out so you can see what that little one looks like. So that's kind of cool. So you could even do that like over this whole thing. You could move it around and do it. And then this piece, I wouldn't, I was originally going to trim this down, but now you wouldn't have to. You could kind of leave it like that. Obviously covered up the, the happy. But the other thing you can do, so we'll take this. You see it does get a little flaky pretty fast. So this definitely... <laughs> needs to be very thoroughly washed and I probably should have brought a wet towel with me but I usually wipe the tools off as quickly as I can as well but for some reason say you wanted to take like this off of the part here you can scrape it off it still will leave some of the ink color obviously because we've added ink to it but it kind of leaves like a neat detail so there's that piece and let me lift this up so you can see So then you have this piece, and again, you can make it as much or as little as you want, just like that. It's got a lot of sparkle in it. You probably can't see it as much on here, but it really is super iridescent. And there is plain, so you don't have to get the sparkly one. There's also one that's plain. So this one, you definitely want to, like I said, you want to let it soak um, in water, just warm water and some dish soap. Let it sit. You can use like an old toothbrush and scrub it off with. The other thing you could do with this, even though too, is you could like go around the edge and put this on the edge of your paper with whatever's left on your block. So this is definitely something you want to make sure you cover your surface of because you don't want it getting everywhere, especially with the glitter and the ink in it. Just kind of tap it on there. That's something pretty cool I think like the edging so I'm gonna leave this here I'm gonna see if I can wipe this off of this block this all definitely needs to get washed I'm gonna put this give me one second I just want to put this on the side so it's kind of all together and all right and then I have my other one over there as well so let's see Yeah, this is a pretty, it's a pretty cool um, technique. The only thing is it does, like I said, it definitely does require some drying time to let it like dry and cure. Hi, Tina from Street, Maryland. You're not so far down the street. Thanks for hopping in. I'm just like at the other end of 543 from you. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so the other thing I was thinking, so we did... This one was embossed. This one was just uh, ink to paper. This one was the embossing paste. What was the other idea that I had? I did that with the clear. So you could also do this too if you wanted to on white paper with the colors. So I'm gonna pick one of these and do this. This will be kind of the same thing again, but I'm gonna do it with a different pattern and I'll do it again with the Versamark. Ooh, you know what would be cool? It would be the clouds. I don't know how crazy they would be in blueberry, but let's give it a shot. 
So these are going to, um, most likely, they probably will not carry to the new catalog because a lot of times when they put out new stuff for the in color. So if you don't have these, you get all five of the uh, 2018, 2020 in colors. So Grapefruit Grove, Pineapple Punch, Call Me Clover, Lovely Lipstick, and Blueberry Bushel. So you get all of these whoops, in one little pouch. So something to keep in mind if you like embossing. And they are smaller. I will tell you that. They are they are smaller, but I've used these a lot and there still is a lot in. But one other thing about these, they are really, really pigmenty. So you have to be careful. Like if you, if you pick this up and you touch it, it really definitely has a lot of pigment to it. So if you're working with white, be really, really careful. I mean white cardstock, because I know we all wear white shirts when we craft, but if you're working with white, be careful because it does tend to smudge very easily because they have a lot of pigment, which is good because you at least are getting great color out of it. So we'll do that. And how about if we do this one? And what I'm gonna do before I do this one, just because I wanna make sure that I only get the clouds, is I'm going to take the uh, embossing buddy and just go over it just so we cut down on the static because even though it's been rainy and springy, it still is extremely staticky here for some crazy reason. So I'm gonna put my clouds on. I'm gonna move these up a little bit so I can get that flat board. And I have some tape here. These are in the annual catalog, the decorative masks and the in color embossing powders. They are in the annual catalog. So the one that's going to be ending soon. So the big, the big fat catalog, if that makes it more sensible. Okay. So since again, I know this one was dirty, I did kind of contaminate it, but since we're going to be doing this with blue, I'm going to just ink direct to it. The one thing that I will say is kind of neat when you do ink with this is you can at least see when it's dirty, you can see where you put your Versamark. <laughs> All right, so that should be good. Just like that. All right, I'm going to lift this up. Again, this is another one that's going to need to be cleaned. You can kind of barely see the clouds on there. So then I'm going to take my powder and dump. This would be pretty neat too. You could do it on a, uh, like on the balmy blue paper or pool party. So I'm just shift around and just dump on the other end. This, this, these clouds remind me a lot of uh, Toy Story. The clouds in the Toy Story movie, if there's any Toy Story fans out there. Some of these I may not have inked as much, but that's okay. No biggie. So I'm going to set this here very carefully. This is why I use these coffee filters because they're kind of easy to get them to pour. And then I just use them over and over again. I probably would use a special one for white if you really wanted your white to be super white, but otherwise I've used them for everything and I haven't noticed any difference in like color contamination. Other cool thing, in case you don't know this, you can mix like the blue. If you took blue, the blueberry bushel embossing powder and you added a little silver, it makes it a little shiny. So that's another cool idea if you've never tried that. They are coming out with Toy Story 4. It's actually, I believe it's on my brother's birthday. I can't wait to see it. All right, so we're gonna just heat up our embossing tool. Keep these up. I'm going to stop right here in the middle just so you can see the difference. So when they're actually heated, again, these aren't as solid because we did this with the pad. So if you wanted to make sure that you had a more solid cloud, you could use the sponge dauber with the Versamark and like really get in there. But if you can tell right here, these are shiny and this is dull because it has not been embossed yet. So just make sure that when you look at it to see if it's done, it'll have a shine to it if it's actually fully heated. If not, it's dull. So then you want to just go back and hit it again. And 
Uh, you can also do this from the top and the bottom because you'll heat the powder underneath. So either way is fine. A lot of times it also helps to kind of even out the paper so it doesn't get as wonky. And you want to make sure that you keep it moving the whole time you're doing it. That's another really good idea because if not, you can burn your paper. Not burn it, but it'll have like a singe mark. And then, unless that's the look you're going for, I'm not sure how singed you want your cards. All right, so there is that. That's all finished. This one has this one. Yeah. Oh, nope. I didn't get these two. Hold on. I'm smudging them off. So just another tip. I know you guys probably just saw me, but you do want to be careful. I've burnt myself really bad before with this embossing powder. If it's if it's still like warm, it will actually stick to your finger and it does hurt. So, so there's that background. So you could use that for something else if you wanted to, like a kid's card or if you just, I mean, you could cut this in strips and use it. But let me show you one other thing you can do with this. So we have this. It's white and you're kind of like, well, it's almost a little too white. So here's what you can do. You can do one of two things. You could take your balmy blue. Now remember, balmy blue is a little darker than it really looks. So you want to start with this if you're going to use it with a gentle hand because it definitely, it has a lot more color than you think. It looks pretty on there. Like a baby, it's not quite as babyish. It does have some, some hue to it. So I'll just dip my sponge and then you can go in, just add a little bit of blue. So if you don't want your sky, oh, there's a couple other spots I didn't get as well as I thought I did. That's okay. And then you can color in that a little bit. So it kind of gives more of that cloudy look to it. If you wanted something a little bit more intense, you could use your sponge dauber. Another thing you could do also is you could even take your, um, your ink pad and hit the edge. You have like a nice edge to your paper. A lot of times if I can't find my sponge in time or something, or if I just want something different, if you just go along the edge and it really gives a nice border to it. So there's a whole nother background for you. Wait a minute. I missed an official crafting term. Wonky. That is, yes, that's right. That is officially an official crafting term. Wonky. <laughs> you could also even do your, um, you could do your rooster something crazy. I mean, it could be completely fun. It's just up to you. So one other thing I'm going to show you with these masks, this will be the last one that I'm going to show you is, and then we'll see if we can somehow pull a card together out of this is, let me see. I should, oh, here it is. I was going to say, I should have some paper cut, but so this one is one I did a while ago and I know I got this idea from someone. I cannot remember who it was specifically, but I thought this was a super cool idea. So what you would do is we're going to just kind of line this off off a little bit, okay? And I'm going to see if I can find some more. Oh, here's some tape over here. Some tape. This is the green tape. It's not quite as sticky. The frog tape. So speaking of frogs, what if we'll do this in greens? And somehow maybe we can fit that frog in there. I don't know. I don't know if this is a, a pipe dream because I don't really think frogs hang out on medallions. But they do hang out on lily pads, so maybe that's close enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, and Mossy Meadow. Mm, shaded Spruce. Let's see if that looks better. No, I'm going to do Shaded Spruce. So I'm going to do these three greens. Okay, so what we're going to do, so I have that one. This one I think is clean. I don't even know now. Let me grab a different sponge because I don't know which one I touched. So I'm going to grab three sponges. You don't really need three. You could just go from dark to lighter, but it'll kind of give you a nicer effect if you do it with a clean one. So you'll take a sponge. I'm going to start with the light color, which is the granny apple green. And I'm just going to kind of pop first. So just like bounce on it, I guess. And then color a little bit more once you spread your ink out a little bit. I did this once before. We did, actually did this for card class in um, shades of purple. It turned out really cute. So you want to make sure you have your edge inked. That way it kind of gives you that nice round circle part. Okay, so there will be one. Yeah, it does cut the starkness. You're right with that. It, it almost like softens that crazy blueberry bushel. <laughs> All right, so this one I believe was garden green. Yes, garden green. 
So I'm just going to go more a little bit more on the center with this. I'll kind of fill a little bit to the edge, but we want to get more in the center. Definitely here at the center of this medallion. Other cool thing you could do with this is you could do like all different colors if you masked it. So you could take your, um, your Stampin' Right markers or your Stampin' Blends and fill this in a little bit. All right, so there's that. I don't want to do too much more. And then for the last one, we'll do the shaded spruce. Okay. I'm going to really make sure we get the center. And I'm going to get the, the real center super, super dark. Kind of same thing again, just popping. Just to like blend it out in spaces. So, of course, the other thing you know I really want to do with this, and I'm going to, <laughs> is to spray it with, I'm like keeping these on the side in case I decide to pull them back out. But I want to spray this with shimmer paint, but I want to show you what it looks like first. So, isn't that neat? So, you have that like cool medallion. So, now you can like shimmer it. You could do it with your Wink of Stella. Just kind of depends on what you want to do. I'm going to see if I can line this back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it here. That way there's no shimmer on anything but the color that's actually showing through. So I already mixed this one up. I'm pretty sure this is the frost white. So you could do this with the frost white and the champagne are the ones that are in are able to be ordered currently. Um, we also did offer copper and gold. So if you have those, that would be cool. You could do it with gold. That would be really pretty too. They may possibly come back on the clearance rack. You never know. Sometimes they bring those kind of things back. They don't usually bring stamp sets back, but sometimes they'll bring like these accessories back. So these two are good. They're in the catalog. These two retired with the Christmas holiday catalog, but they might be back. You never know. I'm kind of hoping they come out with some other ones because I think these are really cool. So what you do is you have your... Spritzer, yes, so I marked this one, Frost White. So you have your spritzer, and what you're going to do is you're going to fill it up with rubbing alcohol. It doesn't matter what percentage. I usually fill it to about like three quarters of the way, and then you want to really shake this, and I'm going to just show you how to mix this up. And then you'll add just like a drop, and a drop is technical, kind of like wonky. Depending on how shimmery, I guess you want it. Okay. And then I'll put this in and just shake it. And the neat thing is, even after you add this, if you just give it a shake, you can tell because the pen, it's pretty sparkly in there. It's probably not really easy to see, but you can definitely see the shimmer inside. So then all you do, you put these up. Again, you do want to protect your surface because it does get everywhere. But since, you know, I'm being a little sloppy as usual, I'm going to spray and it will re-wet your ink just a tad, okay? Because the alcohol does dry really quickly, but it will slightly wet your ink. So you'll be like, oh, everything blended. It's okay. Just give it a second. You can also, if you want to, you could lift this up and heat it with hit it with your heat tool. Just to dry it. Now, one thing I did notice is once I sprayed it, it kind of like activated if there's any little dots in there, if you can see those, but I still think it looks neat. But look how pretty, so pretty. You could also get this effect if you wanted to use shimmer paper instead. So just kind of depends on what you have or what you want to try. And then just make sure that I'm going to put this down and then just put this on top to clean the ink off of it. But I will go down and rinse this in the sink with soapy water warm soapy water and then just wipe it off it kind of does i will tell you this though you'll never really get them like a hundred percent clean so if you notice it has like a film on it, it's okay i've never had something transfer once it's dry it does always look like a teeny bit dirty and i think that's fine i've never had like i said never had an issue with it so that was all four of the masks let me just pull these out so you can see this one is probably almost dry um, again, this one we just used clear embossing powder on in case you're coming in late. This one we just did ink to paper. So, you have all of those. Now what we're going to do is, let me put all these in a, I think I'm finished with them. I'm going to put all these in a coffee filter. <clears throat> Set those on the side. Let me put these away and then we'll finish up 
we have half an hour. We'll finish up, make a few cards. So the other thing I wanted to show you is, and boy, talk about like a varied grouping of cards. A lot of these images, what I did was I uh, stamped them and I stamped them in Memento. Um, I stamped one of them in Bursa Fine. If anybody has it, it gives really nice detail for stamping. Stampin' Up! does not carry that, so just FYI. Um, I've also used Gina Kay's new Amalgam Ink. That's really nice because you can stamp with lots of different stuff with it. So you could use um, alcohol markers, regular markers, watercolor pencils, and it doesn't budge. So that's pretty nice. But what I did was I stamped this and I let it dry and I colored it in with my watercolor pencils. Okay, so these are Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils. Some of them are the ones that are still in the catalog and some of them were those ones that were like the limited time colors. But I'm gonna color in the rooster and I'm gonna do him kind of like a, not, I'm not being like super particular about it. So I'm gonna just color him loosely. Let's see, what else do I want? Some red. And I'm gonna show you what I did to kind of blend the colors together. And you don't have to do this. So you can do this many different ways, but this is just kind of like a good idea. You can either use an aqua painter and give him a little orangish up here. You can use an aqua painter or you could just use like a little fine toothbrush if you wanted to. Not a toothbrush, geez, it was a paintbrush. Like a little cheap toothbrush and kind of dip it in. I don't know what kind of rooster this is. He's extremely colorful. So you could just dip it in like a little cup of water. That way you have more control. Because sometimes I feel like when people, if they have issues with the aqua painter, it probably is more so because it's too wet. So what I do when with my aqua painter is it is filled with water. This one is. You can also fill them with alcohol and do it that way as well. But I just make sure the tip is wet. I don't squeeze while I paint. I just make sure the tip's wet. And as a matter of fact, what a lot of times I'll do is I'll make sure it's wet by squeezing it and then I kind of wipe it off. So it's just barely, it's just barely, barely wet. And that one, look, I dripped right on his head. Oh well, so you can go. And he's, I'm just lightly brushing just to kind of blend out the brush marks. As you can see, I got that huge wet dot there, but it just blends out the brush marks from the watercolor pencils. Now I want to show you one other thing because I never did this before, but my friend um, Fronda, who I do a lot of stuff with, and let me just put a little bit of stuff down here on the ground. She has done it a different way, and I don't know if anybody else has ever done this before, but I thought it was pretty interesting because I've never tried it that way. So there's him. We're just going to let him sit over here and dry. I'm going to do this with the Mother's Day card. So another... You never know until you look. You know what? I am the same way. The same, same way. And Adrian, everything will replay. Once the video is over, all you have to do is go back onto the Facebook page and you can watch it from the beginning because we did a lot of background stuff. So the other thing you can do with um, watercolor pencils, which I didn't know. So you would either want to get a cup of water or I'm going to just improvise. And what you're going to do is I'm going to squeeze a little puddle here with my aqua painter. So what you can do is you can wet your pencil. And it makes your ink, you might not want it that wet. It makes your ink wet when you paint. Now look how much more of a concentrated color that is when you do it that way, right? So then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just drying the tip of it off. Okay, I'm just going to make sure it's dry over here. And then I'm going to just fill this in. Again, this is pumpkin pie, so this is pretty orangey. But then I'm going to bring it down here. This is just with a dry pencil now. Just like that. Okay, so then I have, that was wet pencil, dry pencil. So I'm going to just bring this up so you can see the difference in the color. Same pencil. Now, this is pretty, just slightly damp. And I'm just going to very gently blend the colors. So this is the exact same pencil, but two different ways to use it. This is not watercolor paper. As a matter of fact, no, thank you, Shauna, for asking. This is just regular Whisper White. So you could use it on watercolor, but I just figured I was going to stamp something easy to go on the sentiment. But what, I who 
even thought of, I never would have even thought of that. So again, here's my green. So this is granny apple green. So I'm going to just dip this in and then I'm going to just, one thing is though, it definitely kind of dries out fast. So you want to make sure that if you're doing this and you want that wet look, you want to have some water handy. But so same thing again, that was wet pencil, right? Now I'm going to make sure this is dry. I'm just like, just lightly pressing it to it. I'm not squeezing it. And then I'm going to just go up here and color these in these little leaves. And then you could totally see the difference there. And then if you wanted to, the other thing you could do as well is where did I, you, you could take your blender pen. Blender pens are really good too for blending the color if you want to. Does give a little bit different of a look. So you could use your blender pen. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the blender pen with the flower. So I'm going to do flirty flamingo for these. I'm not sure if these are supposed to be like tulips or water lilies. So again, also you can color heavier or lighter with this. It doesn't really matter. Kind of just depends on what you want to do. Okay. So then I'll take my blender pen. And basically when you're doing with your blender pen, you're just kind of like spreading out the, uh, the color really is all you're doing. Softening up the lines that you made. So there you go. Simple as that. But that's another really, really cool way to do something. The other thing I did for, where is that first card that I did? Here it is. This one, I just colored in the background for this with a pencil. I went really, really lightly. So we'll say this is Bermuda Bay. So I just went like super, super light. I mean, you can see I am barely, barely touching the paper. So that's really light. Because this, I kind of want it to be like a super light background. That way it doesn't really take away from the image. And then same thing, I'm just going to take my aqua painter and just kind of spreading the color around in the background. I'm not squeezing it at all. I'm just using whatever is wet on the tip to kind of spread it around. So there you go. You see, it kind of looks like, makes it almost look like a window in the background, which is kind of neat. So there's that. All right. So now what we're going to do, let me see if I can dry these, dry this rooster out real quick. And we'll put two of these cards together. I just want to hit this really quick with the heat tool. You can see this is the back of a paper I hooped up on. So since this is not watercolor paper, this, um, spot is really kind of wonky, but it's okay. We're going to just use it anyway. No big deal. And what else was I going to say? You know, Karen, I know a lot of people who still have the watercolor pencils, but I think when they made them back then, I don't think they actually made them in stampin' up colors because someone else had asked me a while back, did I know what colors they were? My original watercolor pencils, believe it or not, are probably from 15 years ago and they are Prismacolor pencils, which I really, really liked. However, when you're like making something that you want to coordinate, I really like the fact that we have the pencils that actually do match what we're doing. Um, and, and just in case you didn't know, there are a couple kits that you can buy that actually have different watercolor pencils in them. I can't remember what one of the kits is. I wonder if it's either lots of happy card kit, but it has four watercolor pencils in it. So if you really want to like round out your collection, take a look at the kits because sometimes they have them in them as well. All right. So I'm going to just trim this off and I think I just completely kind of snowballed that happy father's day thing up there, but we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. I'm going to take this. This is like, obviously is a little bit crooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim this just a smidge down. I'm going to go just a little bit up here. And hopefully, you know, our mom always would love everything we made. She would never be mad if we made something that was like completely off kilter. So we would give her that card anyway, and she would love it, right? I'm just going to trim my rooster a little bit. I'm going to leave him like that. For the Father's Day, we could do the same thing because we already kind of 
have this one the way it is. Another cool thing you could do is you could cut this part out. That would be a great idea. We could cut this part out with the die. So I'm not going to finish this one now because that will take a lot of time. I'm going to cut this out with the die and then I'm just going to pop it up onto this. So I will show you this one, I promise you, when I get it finished. But another thing, if you are looking for something to add to the background, and you don't know what to do, you could also take like scrap pieces that you have, run them through an embossing folder, and then you could add them to the background before you add them onto this. So let's see, I'm gonna pick two. I'm gonna do this one because it was embossed. Let's see, gosh. Mm, that one will kind of be pretty on there. This one might be nice though, because it has a lot of orange. We'll do that. Yeah. Rooster on a brick wall. I'm not really sure if that goes necessarily. Ah, what the heck. We're going to do rooster on a brick wall. All right, so I will make something with those other ones as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just bring out a little piece. Okay, Bonnie, thanks for watching. You can catch it later on the replay. I'm going to run a little piece of these through. I'm going to do one with the corrugated. And then I'm going to just do a little piece with the leaves on it. And we're going to add these to the background and finish them up. So pieces that I might have handy, you do want to kind of stick with your color scheme. So if you had like something greenish or pink or something, maybe a little piece of blue that went through. So I'm going to pull out and see if I have any little scraps of balmy blue. This is a pretty big piece, but we could probably cut this down. Actually, I'm going to use that for both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and we'll just run half through each of those folders. It doesn't have to match. So we'll say like two and three quarters. Let's see what this one would be. I'm going to do this over the middle. I'm going to cut this down to four. So this piece will be for him. That'll be two and three quarters by four. And then this, let's see what this measures. This is one and three quarters by three and a half. So we'll make this three and three quarters by two and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to run these two through. And then we will add these to a background. So both, this one is dynamic, which means, actually both of them, they're both dynamic. So this means that you have to make sure that you only use one of your cutting pads with your big shot. And you probably also do not want to use your magnetic platform. So you only need one cutting plate and my regular base. So I have my regular base here. And I've heard, but I've heard it both ways, so I don't really know. I've heard that when you run these through that you want to put the opening going in. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to just put this on. Put my plate on. These are a little fatter, so it's going to feel like, ooh, this is a little tougher to squeeze through. It's fine. No worries. So this will be my corrugated piece. And then my other one is my other blue piece the flowers oh my gosh jeez it's in the folder how sad is that all right then i'm going to put this one in crossways kind of have it like in the center of the leaves so if you have little pieces this is something you could do with them just run them through an embossing folder you could stack them onto the back Okay, so when you're using the aqua pen, this kind of just depends. I just did these because I was trying to do something a little quick. If I were you, and if you want to do a really good job, what I would do is I would use Thick Whisper White or watercolor paper. Um, you can get away with doing the regular Whisper White if you use your aqua painter, if you're really, really light to the touch with the paper, or with the ink, with the water, geez it whiz. But sometimes if you squeeze this, like if you even squeeze it a little bit, you could see a lot of water will come out. So what I tend to do is if you're new with using this, you'll squeeze it just to get it wet and then wipe it off with your towel. Kind of just so you want it damp, so it's just better control. And then if you use uh, Thick Whisper White, it's going to be able to absorb more. If you use watercolor paper, it's really going to be able to absorb more. And also then you can pre-wet it if you want. There's a lot of different stuff you can do if you use watercolor paper. So kind of just have to figure out maybe which one it is that you want to use. But that's a very good question. So I'm going to put, we have him here. <sighs> I don't think I like the way these turned out. I think I might have to trim them down a little bit. 
this might almost like covers up too much of it. Yep, it does. See, and that's the beauty about it. You can change your mind if you want, if you really don't like it. I'm going to trim this down just a little. Another cool idea I saw the other day <clears throat> when I was watching uh, Kylie Bertucci late. If anyone has or has not watched her, she made a card out of all scraps of designer series paper. So if you guys haven't seen that, you should check it out. It was really cool. I don't know. I feel like I'm almost going to cover this up too much, even if I do it with this. But that's okay. You know why? We can always make another one. I'm going to take my darkest color. I'm going to take my shaded spruce. And I'm just going to go around the edge of this. These might be the ugliest cards we've ever seen on here. And maybe you would just be like, Rachel, you should have just left them as a background. But that's okay. <laughs> and if you do spritz the paper, yes, that is true. It definitely gives you a way, way deeper fold. So that is 100% accurate. I'm going to do one other thing for this. I'm going to trim this out, just this part here. Because I kind of like doing this. So I'm going to trim the words out. When all else fails, even if we did end up with ugly cards, at least we learned some cool stuff. So that's always fun. Just going to go through and get these just a little bit. Still kind of leaving a border there. And if fussy cutting is, is not your thing, you could certainly omit this step. I know not everybody likes to fussy cut. All right, so there's that. So I'm going to put this on here. When you're putting anything on like these deeply embossed papers, you want to make sure you use a really... strong glue and then what I usually do is I'll sit my block on this while I'm waiting and I'm going to put him on here and then we could always add a greeting to the other side if we wanted to okay so same thing with this just to get him to stick I'm going to put this on just kind of give a good press. So you could add a little greeting to the side. You could add like another little tan panel if you wanted to just to kind of tie them together. And I'm going to grab... I think I'm going to use crumb cake on this on the background because I think it will really uh, kind of neutralize that green. We'll see. It's funny because when I have these ideas sometimes and I just kind of go crazy with different things that I make, the, <laughs> these are sometimes the ones where I feel like I just, I did too much and I live to regret that I didn't like what I made. <laughs> but, or the ones where I tell you guys where I'm just like, I just want to turn the video off and pretend like I didn't make that card. I think a lot of people have those moments. I just happen to share mine with everyone. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty, kind of evens that out a little bit. This one, I'm going to go with, let me see here. Gosh, I think some green would be pretty with that. I'm going to do, uh, do a piece of old olive for that one. One thing I will say, you can certainly tell these cards are not planned out in advance. Because I don't know anybody that would have picked these colors if they're just looking at them. Alright, so I'm going to do that. Kind of give like that nice, just like a color combination. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to put this on here. And then the only other thing you have to do with your rooster, and remember the rooster uh, stamp set does come with couple of really nice sentiments just enjoy the simple moments thanks for your friendship because if you make a card like this then you must need to be friends with me because I you know I'm a little bit crazy for some of these choices I've made today <laughs> all right and then I'm going to stick him on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this because sometimes I think 
Just that like little bit of extra texture. Kind of lends something to it. You could even go if you wanted to and like sponge the edge of this. And just pull this little piece off up here. This is one of those uh, folders, this one specifically with the leaves. I thought it was so pretty when I got it and I was like, oh, I have to have that. But every time I use it, I feel like I never really fully like what I do with it. Does anybody else have those kind of things? It's like you, you're making something and you just think to yourself, gosh, I love that. How come everybody else makes such great cards with that? But mine always look like me. I'm actually going to put this one up on dimensionals. And since I have my strips here, I'm going to just use these strips. I'll show you how to use these in case you've never seen them. These come in a um, a long pack. I think you get three. The cool part is they can bend, which is really nice if you're making shaker cards with these. That's why I bought them originally. Um, you can cut them with your scissors. You can rip them, but sometimes I find when you rip them, the backing comes off a little strange. Put it like that. But you can make these to nearly anything. I have recently also gotten foam. Like those big pieces of foam that I want to put. I just haven't used one of them yet. This is a little strange of a Mother's Day card. But kind of looks like the Rainbow Stamper would have made this for me. He probably would have chose better colors, quite honestly. <laughs> Alright, so one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to stamp just thanks for your friendship. And we're going to put that on here somehow. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks for putting up with my crazy self. All right, let's see if we have a little scrap. A little piece here. I'm gonna just do this in memento. That's pretty, it turned out nicely, surprisingly. If you could always punch this out if you wanted to, I'm gonna just trim it up. You could round the edges with our uh, trio punch. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? So since this has a straight line of words across the top, I'm going to do this. It kind of reminds me of like if you think of a mullet, like it's professional at the top and then the bottom. I'm going to kind of follow the words a little bit. Just do that just a little bit over here. You could even put like a little bit of ribbon if you wanted to on that. I'm going to put just another little piece of strip on the back to pop this up. Just like that. could sponge a little color around the edge of that if you wanted to. Yeah, Not my favorite card, but I got carried away with the backgrounds. I should have just called this background day and not made a card. Maybe I would have been a little happier, but that's okay. All right, so there we go. We have our clouds, which we embossed with blueberry bushel. We have our other background, which we used with the shimmery paint, and we added some um, blueberry bushel. I don't really think you can see very much of the gray granite but this one we also did with gray granite and then we added the smoky slate I believe to that we use these with the sponges and with the daubers so definitely lots of ideas for you guys to try for background stuff um you can kind of pump up your card this card I will I will tell you one thing taking this part here in the front away the other card I made with this when I did this I did it tone on tone so it was um blackberry bliss I think I used Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather, and I actually backed it to the darkest color, and then I just put the sentiment on the bottom in black. So this could be, aside from this being crazy like that, a totally, crazy is good, thanks Gail. This could be a totally, like a subtle, really, really beautiful card. And I don't think I have that sample anymore. For some reason, I think, I think I sent it to somebody. But that card was really pretty. And the other thing that ended up, just as a quick note that I did with this was, I layered it in, um, there was a piece of pineapple punch behind it. So it was purple, the pineapple punch, and then the blackberry bliss was the darkest color. And man, the contrast of those cards were just beautiful. So another thing you could do with this one 
if you could find your opposite, if you have your color coach or like a color chart, you could find your opposite to the green, lay that behind it, and then back it onto the darkest green. That would be a beautiful card as well. So I hope I've at least given you some ideas to try with your, uh, oh my gosh, what are these things called? Your oh, masks, embossing masks. I don't know. Sometimes I think my brain is like three steps behind what my mouth wants to say. You could try your embossing masks. You could try your paste and you could use these for different things. You could use them with the direct ink to paper, with the Versamark, with the other ink, with the sponges, lots of different things to be able to try. And I just want, you know, anybody that left a comment, I am going to draw. I drew a winner the other day. She hasn't contacted me yet, but I am going to draw for, um, I have a couple card kits that no one claimed. So I'm going to draw and I will send them out to someone. So if you haven't, if you've been watching up to now and you haven't left a comment, make sure you leave a comment and I will pick a winner. And thank you guys very much for entering into that Rainbow Stamper or Rach who had the best card. I think his really was really, really dear. He did a really good job on it. And I thank you all for watching. Thank you very much to everyone who has placed an order this month. You have no idea how much I appreciate your support. I really, really do. I just got a very nice order yesterday from Gloria. So I'll be sending her out her thank you card and her little thank you gift. Um, I have really hit a huge mark. I am so much closer with that flex point accelerator. So that's amazing to me as well. So thank you all for tuning in each week for sharing your ideas and your kind words. And I hope you have learned a little something today. And if not, I'll see you again next week and try to teach you something else. I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for watching.